Man, to say I've been looking forward to this interview uh, is a is an understatement of the year. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and I, you know, as we know, I am doing a series to honor m former military and first responders in the month of September and October. And man, this guy's the first name that popped into my head. So I had to call in some favors and work some angles and and really reach out. And this guy was kind enough and humble enough and gracious enough to be here and I'm going to introduce Eddie Penny who served in the Marine Corps was a Navy uh, SEAL uh, he was on the uh, he was a member of Dev Grew, which all of you know what that is uh, the best of the best elite of elite in my opinion uh, had you know went on seven deployments uh, and you know with in uh, Iraq Afghanistan Africa um, was just right in the middle of the junk and 20 years as a combat veteran uh you know eddie's got such a long list of accomplishments and things to be proud of and and reasons why i hold him in such high regard but i can't ever get into all that completely because he would do a way better job at, at listing that than i do but i will say you know after uh after the military he, he started a group uh, a company called contingent group which is a risk mitigation and security company which obviously taps in to a lot of his skill sets that he just translates over from his time in the military so man i'm gonna shut up and get out of the way and i'm excited to introduce eddie penny welcome hey buddy thank you for having me i really appreciate it seriously uh amazing introduction honestly uh i appreciate it but um you know just went where the heart took me and that's where it was uh, to do the career that you said and you know i was definitely thankful for it had to leave uh in unfortunate circumstances i would say but uh but you know just marched on and carried it on and try to do the right thing every day man just like we yeah. all are yeah no well, we i should hear be, you right <laughs> that's what yeah, hey and nobody's perfect and, and that, as long as we're trying to do the right thing like i think that's what character is is just making that effort every day knowing we're going to fall short on occasion um, in my case, I've fallen short on many occasions. Uh, so man, talk about just real quick, like some of the heroes in your life. Cause I mean, I, you're not going to call yourself one and none of former military that I've ever talked to will ever consider themselves heroes, but let's face it, civilian world. We do, we use that word. We're not afraid to call you guys hero. I mean, anybody that lays their life down to protect and, and defend somebody else to me is a hero. So did you have anybody in your life growing up that sort of set that curve and set the bar high for you in that regard? Yeah, I guess uh, if we're going to take it back to childhood, I, two, well, actually three um, figures really stand out. One was my father. I always looked up to him um, more so just because he, he would get the job done, whatever it was, like he just got it done. And I was like, Wow, that's so that's how that works. You just you just do it, right? Yeah, Nike, right. that's one thing Nike's got right. Just do it, right? Right. He, he was so good about that. And then another one was my um my little league baseball coach, uh, Mr. Murphy, who unfortunately passed a couple of years ago. But he he was so he was he was the he set the bar for me of like be fair, always be fair, but be firm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he was, he was firm in the, with his directions, what he, ex what his expectations were. And he made it very clear and he was fair in whatever disciplinary action, if you were goofing off or not doing the right thing or whatever it was, he, he was very firm and fair. And I'll never forget that. And I, I attempt, I, I will never be Mr. Murphy. Uh, I attempt to do what he did. And then another one was um, my coach, Larry Lyons. When I was swimming, I, I looked up to that guy. He was an older gentleman. Um, just the way I, I just like it's what you look at like when you're a kid and you get like a brand new bicycle for Christmas or something you're just like staring at it. it's just like glowing like a bright star and he was like that I remember just him talking I'm like keep talking <laughs> please, yeah, yeah. please please fill me please fill me and I, and I didn't realize uh what an influence he was on me until after I left and I didn't have that no longer but I, I just saw that there's one thing that he said that I, you know, sometimes forget, but I'm like, okay, go back to your basics. And I put this into my, my basics category, because we always talk about basics and in sports and in and, and combat and mm -hmm. in, um, in, yeah. in the military, yeah, your fundamentals, your basics. He would always say, take care of the little things and the big things will take care of themselves. And like that stuck with me. It's like, it's, it's so true. Like you take care of 
your little things around your house, your, your family's just going to, you know, become that team that supports us for each other. And yep. then we can just tackle anything or at work or at the gym, you know, like I'm going to eat a good meal before I go work out. Now I'm going to perform better because I ate that. But if you don't do those little things, it's going to yep. start toppling down. There goes your health, all this stuff. So uh, that's just one thing that always stuck with me, but those are probably my three from my childhood that like, just no kidding. Those were heroes. But I mean, there was, yeah. Obviously, you got your movie stars like yeah. your right Schwarzenegger, Stallone, yeah. and all that stuff. But you man, know, but those are my real real life ones. I like that because, and you probably don't talk a lot about that in some of the interviews. And I, I I hope that we can peel back some of the layers and see behind the curtain just as far as Eddie Penny the the man because I see your faith in everything you do and you're unafraid, which is my segue to asking you about your new movement, I guess you call it. I don't even know that you it's called call that, that, but, that's, but it's a uh, thing. It's more, more that. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, talk about that. You know, I mean, we talk about childhood because people still today in, in these pinnacle roles of success that people are in, they still remember that fifth grade PE, you know, teacher or right, a right, baseball right. coach. So I'm glad you talked about that. I've coached baseball for a long time for my kids and I hope that I've made a difference in some of those kids' lives, but man, talk about in a world and we're going to get, into this a little bit more about some of the world we live in, but man, talk about how this unafraid thing was born. So, uh, so, so funny. It, it, this really came, I'd say it was probably about two years ago when I think, I believe it was when the COVID thing started happening and it, or it might've been like right before I was just driving and a skillet song came on called lions. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it, well, one it. of the verses in it says we are unafraid unafraid and i heard that i've heard the song i don't know how many times before but for some reason on that drive i'll never forget where it was i was turning around to go back on the highway um and i heard that i'm like unafraid i'm like why aren't we why aren't we living an unafraid life we and, and i'm i'm guilty of this and i try so hard to not be it, it might, might be submitting a, a resume to some place that there's no like you tell yourself there's no way you'll get hired or you can never accomplish that. Like I want to bench press X amount of pounds, or I want to run this fast, or, Hey, I want to be a legitimate boxer, or I want to be the best dad or mother that I can be. We, we, we have these things and we're afraid to do it. So many people and people that are listening right now, they just float through life like freaking plankton in the ocean. They're just just floating along until that freaking humpback whale comes up and swallows them whole. And that's it. Yeah. And it's like, and, and the thing needs to be, is like, okay, what, what are you leaving behind? What's your legacy? What, what are, are you like? Is somebody be like, dude, that guy was a legend. Or you'd be like, Oh yeah, I knew him. Like, what do you want to be right. remembered as? And right. Um, right. Sorry, dogs are going crazy out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like, we need to have an unafraid mindset. And that's where the, like, cause it all starts with the brain. And it took me back to that's right. Buds and all that training. I mean, a lot of it, it had to do with physical, but the majority of it is right here and was right here. It was my heart and it was my mindset. And that's where the logo kind of formed, which I actually got off like Shutterstock, did some tweaking to it. I'm like, I really love the heart and your mind. Like it's gotta be a hundred percent in it because every individual, though everyone listening and anyone out there, mm -hmm. if they want something, they really want it and their heart and mind's in it, they'll go get it. Yeah. So where is this like turnoff that this, that like, I want to be a good father. I would have to say like every, every dad wants to be a good father. Yeah. Right. I want to be like, where is that turnoff? And, and I, I use that as an example because man, for so long, for so long, and I've, I've talked about it openly, it's in the book that's going to be coming out hopefully soon. Uh, it's just, I was so absent with my children and it's just mm -hmm. like, it haunts me. It eats me alive. Uh, and, and we, and we do it. So, but so th that would, that would be something that we would want to be. We would want to be a father, just like our Lord is our father to yeah. us. Like I want to emulate that and be that for my kids. But, but there's this, like, there's this like blockage in some things. Like, why did I just blow up? Why did I just yell? Why am I doing this? Why am I letting this beat me up to death? They're a freaking kid age appropriate. You know what I mean? It's just like, why, yeah. why, why they're even good on the list and, oh, yeah. or, or exercises or eating like crap. I mean, you just go to town on this stuff or just being a good person. Why am I not saying hi to that? Just, or hold the door open for a person. Why? What if the whole world did that? Like hold the door yep. open for each other. Hey, how you doing? I love your shoes, man. Those are sweet. Where'd you get those? 
like all of a sudden Complete strangers, right? Yeah. It, it, Absolutely. That, that makes people smile. Smiles yeah. build it, like it's life. It's the light, you know, Ooh. pushing out the darkness and yeah, but people are afraid. Awesome. People are afraid to look people in the eye. We're afraid to say, Hey dude, I dig your shirt. We're afraid to, I'm not going to hold the door open. I don't know this person. They might have COVID, whatever, it, whatever, it, whatever it may be. Like what we're afraid to do so much and so many people in their brain want to do something, but they're just plain scared, plain and simple. You, you cannot, you can't Absolutely. fight it. And there's things that you want to do. I, I would, there, and me too. Yeah. Um, that yep. I'm afraid to do, but I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll look at my shirt or my wristband, all these little accountability things that I do uh, just to remind me like, dude, you have an unafraid mindset. That's how you live your life. That's how you live your life. Yep. Uh, and yep. you try to help others and others will help others. And it's just, that, yep. that's just where it is. Long well, you, story. <laughs> for- no, no, but you know, you, you, if anybody, you of all people had reasons to be afraid in your line of work, you know, for 20 years over in the hairiest of hairy situations and and i guess you know yeah you're probably a little bit fearful in those moments but you're too busy and too like on point to really let that sink in and now we're so comfortable when you come to into just everyday life we have too much time to sit and think about all the things we can't do or we're afraid to do and and to your point about being nice and just reaching out and being afraid of doing that to people we i think we we're afraid that they're not going to give it back to us in the equal portion we gave it to them. You know, we're so worried about this reciprocity 100%, factor. 100%. Oh, man. So I'm not going to do anything nice because the world doesn't like me. That person hates me. So I'm just not going to, let's just do, you know, let's just move our separate and, and ways. That, and, and that right there is a, the biggest cop out because absolutely. as we know, we can control our actions. We cannot yeah. control others' actions. We, we yeah. just can't. Unfortunately, we can't. It'd be great to do sometimes, like for the spouse or for sure. our kids or sure, sure. your sparring partner, whatever it might be. But you can't do it. But you can control your actions and like be the example. It, it is proven fact that if someone tells me to do something, I'll probably do it. But if they show me how to do it and they're doing it with me, like that is that, that's great leadership right there. I mean, that is great leadership. Leadership. So be the example, be the example, be the unafraid one that's doing these things. And pretty soon it's just going to rub off on people. You might not yeah. see it, yeah, but it's just going to, you're just planting that seed and let it freaking grow, man. Yeah. On their family, friends, coworkers, I, whatever it might be. You know, I always say, don't put, don't put words in other people's mouth. Don't tell them they hate you before you actually even know anything about them. I exactly. Mean, in your mind, don't say things about people and you're just assuming, you know, what they're going to do to you or not do. So, man, that's a great point. And, uh, we live offended. Not, we, we, huh? we live offended. Oh, that's just it. Like, that's just so, like, everything's oh, see the way they gave me the face. We have no clue uh-huh. that 15 minutes ago they might have got a call yeah. that their child has leukemia. We don't we don't Absolutely. see behind the curtains in other people's life. Now, now that's probably not the answer, but we don't know what's going on. Man, they could have lost a loved one. Yep. They could have been diagnosed with something. They could be super sick. We don't know. Yep. Yep. You we, might. I mean, maybe. Maybe get inside someone's skin for a second. That might, that might be right. something. I think I might have read a scripture about that too. You know, Probably, maybe do right. unto others as they do. So, uh, man, what keeps you? <laughs> if you're thinking about our country, and and I know we can go off on many directions on this, but what keeps you up at night when it when it comes to just kind of where we are? Anything that that just kind of keeps Eddie scratching his head and just staring at the ceiling, laying in bed, wondering. <sighs> What the heck, man? Anything you know, out there? Uh, I mean, uh, my brain goes crazy. You could probably look at my Instagram feed and be like, this really bothers him. And certain things do bother him. But in the end, as I put my faith into Christ, I know it doesn't matter, all this stuff. But on mm. that same note, I feel like when good people keep their mouth shut and do not fight for the goodness, I feel like that is not right either. Yeah. So I know everything's going to be fine. I know things are probably going to suck before they get better, but I know in the end, everything's cool. Are yeah. people going to get hurt and, and cert- like they already have and bad things happen and we're like, whoa, what, what is happening? Absolutely. And it's going to continue and it's going to continue. Uh, but I know in the end, I know, I know what it looks like. I know, I know the end game. Uh, yeah. So, and I have faith in that and, and I don't have anything that keeps me up at night. Honestly, the only thing that keeps me up at night, if I overreact with my children or if my spouse and I, or we have like a disagreement or something, we really don't fight. If we have like a disagreement and I'm just like, man, I really wish you knew I wasn't trying to be condescending or whatever it was, right. whatever I might've messed up on. 
that's probably the only thing that keeps me up at night is family issues, but which is very, doesn't happen. Uh, yeah. But nothing on the outside world, I don't stay up and be like, man, I can't sleep because of this. I can't believe this has happened because yeah. it's already taken care of. Yeah, you know? and is. that's a beautiful feeling, dude. That's a beautiful oh, it's pe- feeling. It's peaceful. Right? You know, we might not feel it in the day to day, but at the end, when we get down to brass tacks, we know that we win in the end, like you said, and we have peace about it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it, none of this surprises God. Anything right. that's happening right now is not a surprise. Like we're shocked. I mean, I could pick up my phone and be shocked in, in five seconds, but, uh, you know, none of, nothing surprises him. So this is all kind of, we're, we're going down this, this trail that was already sort of predicted, but, um, man, so talking about you and kind of going through, you know, you're, you've started a company and you know, after the military and you're involved in the unafraid movement and, and you've got a lot of things going on. It sounds like you're writing a book and man, uh, what about Eddie Penny? Like deep down in the core of Eddie, like what what drives you to be just excellent at what and, and face these resiliencies that are out there and just press through? And I know you're active in in uh, martial arts, I'm guessing, or boxing. I know you're active mm-hmm. with your body. And so, man, what about you? Because that's not on every street corner. Let's face it. Somebody gets punched in the face, man. Most likely they go in inside and and take their ball and go home, right? So what about Eddie keeps him going forward through resilient, through, uh, adversity? Uh, definitely. I'd say number one would be my family. I want to be the best example for them. Cause I want them to see, like I've said before, like they, they need to see the example. Like my mm-hmm. family knows the importance of eating right. Even though I pull out the freaking ice cream once in a while. Um, I want them to understand that exercise is important. Yeah. I want them to understand that self-defense is important. I want them to understand that, having a good marriage, a good relationship with your significant other, that is important. So I, I think, and, and, and that is a last couple year thing. The thing that was driving me before was like, Hey dude, we just got to stay alive here. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but that, that's my driving force. It's just like to, to, to try to be the example and, and it, and it started, but when I got on social media, after I retired, I got on, I got on social media, not really understanding what social media was. Like you share a couple of pictures. So I started out on Facebook. You share those my family because my family was everywhere. They could, you know, they see my kids or see what we're up to. And then I got onto Instagram and and not realizing what that world was. And then I, I posted, I, I threw up a Bible verse or something. I, I can't remember what it was. I threw up a, or an inspirational quote or something. And I and I got a message. Uh, and I can't remember exactly what the message was, but it was like, hey, I really appreciate this. I really need it right now. And it like just nailed me. It gave me the chills. And usually wow. when that happens, that's a, that's a God thing. Yeah. Um, and it just hit me. And I'm like, and it was only one comment. That's all it took. And I, and I got that. I'm like, if, if that, that one comment could have maybe saved a dude from putting a pistol yeah. in his mouth, because I, because I've been there, I've, I've had a pistol in my hand. So I know mm-hmm. what that feels like, or it could be like, could have made them make a right decision on not striking their significant other or quitting a job or going into their job and jacking up people, Um, whatever it was, but it was just like, Hey, that I needed that right now. And that made me feel good. I just want to say thank you. So I, I like, and that resonated with me. I was like, dude, that is one freaking comment from a stranger. Don't know where they were. Don't know who they were, but it made me feel good. I'm like, I need to feed, I need to feed people. I need to feed them because I get fed all the time. I have like, yeah. I follow things um, that motivate me, people that motivate me. And I read what they say and I don't agree with it all, but some of it sparks something and then kind of God takes it over like and puts it into my life. You're dealing with this and in, in this category or this category. And I don't know, it's just like, and that's where the unafraid started. And right. then I heard the song. I'm like, it's going to be unafraid. That's it. I, I mean, I got the tattoo. I mean, yeah. it meant a lot to me. It really, it's not like, a, oh, I'm unafraid, man. Like, like, that's not it. It really is like, hey, if we live our lives like this and there's a thousand synonyms for unafraid, you can freaking pick one. Yeah. And if that's your thing, rock on or something yeah. like it. But we we need to live that life. And 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 it really comes down to my family, man. That, that is is my number one, number one. And then of course, you know, God is my number one and then my family, right. but that, that 100% it's for, it comes to my, my family here is like trying to be the best example of a father I can be. Yeah. And man, that's, I mean, that's powerful. And just one comment from somebody, have you, as a caveat, 
have you reached out to John Cooper at Skillet and told him? I'm like, do you know him? Do you have you? Dude, reached that's out? so freaking funny. I, I'm getting chills. So if you could see where this Seriously. is Seriously. So I, so Kyle from Undaunted. Yeah. Oh yeah. Had had, had him on. And I was right. Like, hey buddy, can you hook me yeah. up? I want to send the crew a bunch of unafraid gear. So he did there. I guess they're on tour right now. Tour, but he, yeah. uh, he, <laughs> he did an email introduction with their manager. I'm like, Hey, if you give me the size and a good address, I'd love to send you guys out some stuff. Um, no strings attached. Just want to say thank you. You guys have inspired me with the unafraid and in this. And uh, so I'm waiting on a response back to give him some unafraid gear. But that, that's the story, so funny. Right? You that's awesome. That. Yeah. yeah oh, I'll put I, a nice letter in there and tell him the story. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I reached out to him cause I'd love to have him on. I've listened to his podcast a little bit and I heard him on Kyle's podcast I like and him. I was like, that oh, guy's he's real. He's yeah, the real he, deal. He's real. Um, well, how, right, how, how so, bad is that? Like we like them cause they're real. Should we all be real? There's, <laughs> real is rare that's yeah. so sad why yeah <laughs> well, so yeah i mean and being who you are i mean there's a world of of former navy seals retired navy seals and out there that everybody kind of looks up to right and and these hard dudes and and as people we get sucked into this trap of we got to maintain this persona right i mean right you've right. got to walk down the street and you've got to be a bad dude like if I'm thinking for everybody, right? So uh, what keeps you sort of grounded like that? I mean, I know your faith does in your family, but man, to hear you talk about, you know, caring about other individuals, like literally the example you gave about the hero in your life growing up and the guy that said, be fair to people, right? I mean, you can tell Eddie Penny is hard and he's, he's tough, but he's also can be tender, can care about people, can. So man, talk about some of that persona that's out there because there's more people like you. Yeah, there, there is a lot of, a, a, a lot of it, especially in the spec ops community, we feel, and there, there's some that are, are very real and there's some right. that are very posering. I mean, sure. plain and simple, and you could probably pick them out. Uh, I, I don't know, but I guess we just like, we put in the title, like Navy SEAL. You're like, oh, you're like, everyone thinks Navy SEALs are running and gunning, freaking taking out bad guys. And, and that's true. But at the end of the day, I'm a human man. I get angry. I get sad. I, I you know, I, I cry sometimes at yeah. freaking kids films. It's the truth. Sure, sure. Um, I'm, a, I'm a normal dude. I mean, there and 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 there are people that try to act like they're not that they're they're this different. They're so tough. And I've I've tried. To, I played that game when I was in. Like oh, I'm this. I'm this. But but I'm not. I was a scared little um, low self esteem, mm. you know, individual. That's what that's what I would chalk it up to. But now mm. I don't care. Like I'm a human being. Like I, I I fart and I belch and I'm I'm a normal dude and I freaking. I say I mess up and I, I say I'm sorry and I ask for forgiveness and that's really it. And, and saying sorry was a hard thing for me because of my pride. It was so brutal. hard for me. It's brutal. Um, and I still battle with it sometimes. And the reason I know this, my wife reminds me like, Eddie, of course, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she, humility. She's right. yeah. She's my, yeah, she's my humility. She's my accountability. And um but yeah, but I mean, but being real, you're not going to be be caught lying in, in it's me. It, I'm Eddie. This is me. This is me. Like, take it or leave it. There's a lot of people that don't like me. There's yeah. also a lot of people that do. So, yes. and I am not going to be able to cater to everyone. I refuse to cater because this country is built on catering to these little minute minorities all over the place. And, and, and it's messing up for everyone and it's not fair. Uh, but man, just it's cool to be real. It's cool to see who you are. Like, I, I, I think that is probably the most attractive and manliest yeah. thing I've ever seen. Well, it's and, like and, somebody that's real. Like, dude, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling over here. Like I need help. That is the coolest thing. Like, how can I help? I can't do it, but he can. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But I mean, who was the bad, who's the baddest dude to ever walk the earth? Jesus well, was we, the baddest exactly. dude. And what's the Humblest. shortest verse in the Bible? <laughs> Jesus wept. You know, yep. so he's the baddest dude and the Bible verse where he says, Jesus wept. I mean, come on now. I think we can all as men in the flesh, you know, far, far from being the caliber of Jesus can probably get, you know, own up to some of our emotions and some of our realness and authenticity. And I'm not saying we got to, I mean, that doesn't mean soft. That's what, that's the misconception. The world wants to tell us is you're soft if you ever show emotion or you're soft if you actually 
care about people or empathize with people or serve people. So, right. I mean, this platform here is all about serving. Watch a, watch a movie. You're <laughs> yeah, going right. to see exactly what you're supposed to be, what they, you're supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Or these movie stars or the this is like what they what they show. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of them of are doing it, obviously, for, for the dollar bill. But uh, right. that, that's not reality. Right. That's just right. not true, man. It's right. True. Well, man, where so this whole ep, you know theme and month and everything i i started in september and of course we had the anniversary last week and man can you talk where were you on 9 11 2001 and and can you talk about some of the emotions and some of the things that you were just in awe of or that just absolutely floored you i mean there's a list of them i'm sure of things that floored uh, you yeah. that day but you remember yeah. where you were Yes, I was uh, in bud second phase. I was getting, I was going through, I think it was breakfast because it was, yeah, it was probably six, six thirty West Coast time when yeah. all that crap, mm -hmm. I think it was, was a nine around nine right. or something like that. Um, I was getting my tray and I was walking out. I remember everyone's usually in their conversation or got their face in their, in their tray eating and everyone was like locked on to, we had TVs on the back of the cafeteria and I was like, what's going on? So I looked up and I remember seeing, you know, the building on fire and I, I didn't know what building it was it, the, the way the angle was like i didn't know what it was i could just see a building on fire i'm like oh dude that's crazy an office building fire and then i'm like i could put my tray down not really thinking about anything of it because it's not like i'm going to go rush and save people yeah. wherever this was and um dudes are still locked down I'm like dude what's going on they're like Shh. and i'm like what so i'm like watching and then that's when the second plane wow. went in i was like oh dude okay wow. what's going on i see the instructors going on they're on their phone so obviously we knew something was going on. And at that time I'm like, holy crap. And I'm like, and, and, and to be honest with what I was thinking was maybe they're going to end our training real quick and we're going to go get whoever did this. That's what, that's right. what I was thinking. Yeah. Let's Everybody's think thinking that in the room. Yeah. Everybody in the room's thinking that. <laughs> they got, they got experienced guys so that had to keep freaking go getting wet and sandy. Right. Um, but that's what I was thinking. And then, and I had no clue what was going on. Then we found out it's like, oh my God. And then, then it was led to believe or, or told to be um, bin Laden and at the terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, um, which my views have definitely changed as I learned more uh, over the last two decades. But at that time, I'm like, let's go get these terrorists. Let's go get these terrorists. Like, this is jacked up. And the switch was on to, like, dude, you don't, you don't mess with this, this country. So that's all. Awesome. But I, but. I believe the political realm was influenced in that in some way, shape or form. I don't know exactly what, because I don't know all the answers, but I have a, a, a very gut feeling about it. And the reason why I say that I did an op into a specific country, um, a very small op, and that was, we had direct connections with DC while we were doing this. And they were telling us to do certain things and I remember like, why are they telling us how to operate? Yeah. And I'm not going to go into the details, no, but it struck no, me so yeah. freaking weird. And unfortunately, we had bad communications and we couldn't mm -hmm. do certain things. Uh-huh. And um and yeah, we and we can we continued our mission, we accomplished our mission in the in a the best possible way to be done. But uh, certain things were found on that. that I'm like, dude, there, this is something. There's more. It's rubbing to this. you the wrong way there's the entire time. Process. Yeah, it's yeah. not just bad guys go good guys go get bad guys. That's not it. There's a little bit more. Um, yeah, we'll just we'll leave it at that, and that's well, why. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I totally get it, and that's justified completely. And I think more of that is being talked about. You know, even in the last, I don't know, five or ten years, even. But uh, man, so were you were you a Christian? Were you a believer? Uh, when you were in, I mean, I guess you could say I was a believer. I wasn't a, a follower. I wasn't a, I wasn't like digging into the Bible or, or really praying or, or talking to them, just really talking yeah. to them. Yeah. Like I should have been not really at all. I mean, I believe that there was a God, I believed in Jesus and I believe that there was a devil. So I guess sure. I, okay, saying, I believe is totally different than yeah. following. Did you, well, did you, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. And, and you had the right boxes checked for sure. But uh, to your point, the relationship might not have been there to it is now to the degree it all. is now. No. So you have any, you know, 
back when you were serving, um, were there any guys that were strong in their faith that you can think of? Yes. Not name, not naming anybody, but obviously, but sort of people that it struck a chord in you and it kind of intrigued you a little bit. And you were like kind of captivated by how they handled themselves. Anything? Getting, like, and, getting did it, and, and I guess my, <laughs> my question would be, how did that impact your faith going forward? It, it definitely impacted me because I was very curious. I would watch them. There was, I can remember when I was at team two, there was, at least three that I can think of. And then when I moved over to development group, Adam Brown being one of them, there was oh, wow. a couple of guys uh, over there. And I just remember their faith. And I remember because I would always ask them about it. I'd be like, like stupid questions. Like, Hey, what's your favorite old Testament or new Testament? I'm like a dude at a bar trying to hit on a hot chicken. I have no clue what to say. And they're like, yeah, old Testament. Cause they're like, cool story. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Like, like I know what's going on. I have no clue, but I would always ask questions. And I remember I try, I would try to, pay, especially on deployment, I would always take a Bible and I'm like, I'm going to read this Bible. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I get to like midway through Genesis and I'm like, okay, this is, this is enough. <laughs> it's like, hard. It, like it's hard, multiple man. times. And now yeah. I've read it like probably three, at least three times. Wow. Um, so I, I don't know. It just, it came, it, it was so boring and mundane and like, and now it like the thing, like, it's like, it comes to life and it's like a pop-up book and like birds are flying out and spears are going this way. And Karen, it's phenomenal. I'm you. So I, I believe that's, that, that's your mindset for you right there. Yep. Yep. But yeah. I was, I was totally, I would check them out. I would ask them things. I would see him pray. And I'd be like, what is that? Does it do anything? No, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Maybe it does. No, it doesn't. Like you'd have that internal conversation, right? Good. Bad. For sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's crazy. You talk uh, about Adam. You talked about Adam Brown. So you served pr directly with him at one uh, point. Yeah, for a couple deployments, I was with him okay. for for a few years. That's yeah, so like he. Four or five. I mean, of course, I've read his book and best book that I've ever read, Great and book. probably Great. will never. Nothing will probably ever top that, unless maybe yours does when it comes out. So we'll get to that later. His book um, was phenomenal. No, phenomenal. it was. And so to know that you were with him directly, like I could see you, like who wouldn't just kind of observe him enamored with the way he balanced everything. And uh, one guy I wish, I mean, you know, they always ask you, who do you want to talk to when you get to heaven? Who do you want to meet? That's going to be on the list. He's on the list. So I'll tell you what, you want to know, you want to talk about an unafraid mindset? Yeah. Adam Brown. Oh, boom. Dude. 100%. Think about this, dude. Think about this. You're at a tier one unit. You lose one of your eyes. Oh, sorry, before you lose one of your eyes, you're good. Your eye dominant that you shoot eye. With, your <laughs> dominant <laughs> eye. And you're going to learn to shoot, which, which I was with him when he was learning, like, let's try this. Let's try Whoa. this. I remember being awesome. at Shaw's uh, late at night where there's a couple of us just trying to think everyone loves to shoot and just trying things. And like, he's like, ah, oh, I don't like this. Let me try this one. And then someone obviously interjects with their input. And then finally he figured out what worked best for Adam. Yeah. And, um, but he's going to go try out for the top, top you, the, the tip of the spear for, sure. for the Navy with what, with his bad eye gone. Like you want to talk about being unafraid. That fool was unafraid, dude. He was, he Nuts. knew that he was going to have to jump out of a plane at night with a bunch of other parachuters at 30,000 feet with oxygen, gear, weapons, night vision goggles with one eye. Yeah. We worked it to where he would, I think he ended up, he would get dropped out first, I believe. We would give it a couple seconds and then we would go and it, he would just be off to, he would fly off to our right or to our left of us and not be in our stack because it wouldn't, so yeah. we wouldn't, because he, he was blind on one side. We would just, we made it work. Yeah. Uh, but dude, like, are you kidding me? He was so, he wasn't scared. And like, his dominant there, hand uh, too. His dominant every, hand got yeah. messed up too. And, yes. and he had to learn to shoot the other way. I was just, I, was, I was the one that put his fingers on where it says the corpsman, you know, the yeah. corpsman is built. Oh, yeah. I was, that was me. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's a pretty I know gnarly I was picture. Hey, <laughs> that's a gnarly picture in the book. I will say. And, yeah. His, uh, uh, that's, I think it was his three fingers yeah. were played up and, and they're like, Hey, you had to go take care of Adam and see if he needs help. And I go over there. What's up, buddy. He, he's sitting on a rock. And he's like leaning over his knees. I'm like, what's up? And he just goes this. And his fingers are just laid over. And I was like, all right. So I get out my med kit. He actually got out of his med kit, got his gauze, just put his fingers as best I could and kind of like bandaged them up. And I guess the way they went back in, 
supposedly saved, saved his fingers. Oh but uh, but but to be honest as heck, I really was not like this will save his fingers. I was like, I feel like this is the right thing to do. So your uh, procedure wasn't necessarily making it any medical journals, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna be any. <laughs> what you do? You're teaching that <laughs> this at, is a like med school. Okay. Well, we man, <laughs> so cool. I mean, just to, just to be able to share, you know, dirt and, and shade with that guy, I can only guy, imagine. Man. And, He's and so guy. that's a, pl- that's a person you, you, you know, you think, wow, if we ever had a superhero, you know, that was just a human, uh, besides Jesus, I, I mean, that, you, you think about superheroes, that guy right there. But, um, so obviously you adopted a lot of things from him and, he, you know, try to maybe take some of those examples he set from a faith standpoint and, and just watched him probably never, you know, never waver. Not that he wasn't, per, you know, that he was perfect, but and, and kind of they, they talk about it in, in the book. Yep. They, another, another thing, very real, very, Hey, here, very transparent. You know, there was no facade, which yeah. I, which I appreciate. And I'm sure the readers, because, yeah. because it's like, it's nice to know other people, like other people are going through the same thing. Yeah. And, and I, and I feel bad for like pastors because we, we, I, th- I feel like society puts them on this pedestal, like, Oh, they got their stuff figured out. Their family's perfect. Like, dude, I, I bet if we get inside that brain, they are attacked harder than any freaking oh, one of yeah. us because they are putting out the word of God and, yeah. and, and, and they're humans. The dudes are humans. I, I had a really good friend, um, Paul Cooper. He, he has a church up in broken arrow, uh, encounter church. And he, he kind of helped me, start helping like praying and all that stuff. And we went out to, we used to always get sushi. He's like, all right, let me pray. And I was like, actually I'll pray. Like you take a break, buddy. Let yeah. me pray for you. Let me pray for this meal. And he was, he was like taken back by Refreshing. it because yeah. everyone assumes like you're, it's your job. Like, Hey man, he's just like, he's just like me. Yeah. Bes- besides he's getting spears and arrows in yeah. him from, from the, the title, the dark the title doesn't <laughs> make you invincible, no, right? The no, title no. does not do anything all, other man. than just, no. say you're a shepherd but yeah you talking when you said broken arrow is that up in oklahoma it is it is uh, that's where I, I grew up up there so that's okay. awesome man no uh i you know faith i mean that's a whole other topic too is just how we mismanage it if there's not a better term throughout our day because we get distracted right we get of course knocked off of baseline and and that's normal but um man, do you have anything you would say as we can, I'm going to shift a little bit of gear here. And we talk about advice that we would give ourselves a younger version of ourselves and, and you have kids. So obviously I have kids. We're trying to live this question out on a daily basis and try to show them the answers to the test, right? So that they don't go down some of the same, although we got to let them fall down and skin their knee. Mm -hmm. Uh, What would, what would you say to a younger version of yourself as you're going into the military as to maybe you wish you would have been kind of heads up on or Mm -hmm. something you would have said to yourself that maybe would have made your journey just maybe a little better, little, not easier, but a little bit better. That's a, that's a really tough question. Right now I've got about 50 things I would have told myself. One would be getting the one one would be like, Hey man, God's real. Get your faith on point right now. It's going to save your life. That would be awesome. for sure. And, and I say that as like my shield, like he is my refuge. He is my rock. He is who I'm going to, yeah. uh, that would, that I would definitely be one of them. And I would, and I would say, don't be so freaking hard headed, be open-minded about it and quick thinking, you know, things. And I would also say, um, and I, I feel like I did this later when I went over to the Navy, but in the Marines, I don't think I did it enough is, uh, I'll push the limits and, and don't be a, don't be so afraid to fail. Uh, no one likes failure. It brings you down. It's it's not good for the reputation. It's not good for right. your insides. But at the same time, it's the greatest thing for your inside. It's the greatest thing to say, I've been there, done that, I failed, I learned, and now I'm going to prosper. It's healthy. Uh, yeah. Like, so I kind of contradict myself when I talk about failure. It's like, we want to go, go. We don't fail. We go, we go. But at the same yeah. time, failure is where you learn so it's like keep failing and failing until you accomplish that mission maybe you got to tweak some things and all that stuff but uh i would tell myself to not be so scared so i would don't be unafraid be unafraid yeah the unafraid (laughs) the unafraid was born in you way before you thought it was yeah yeah. um no i hear you i i I was reading i'm reading a devotional now and i might have to just read the book in its entirety but it's called chasing failure and it's by a guy named ryan leak and he's a speaker and that kind of thing and former athlete but 
man, you should hear, he talks exactly what you're saying. He's like, chase failure. Like, mm -hmm. don't run from it, you know, go after. And it sounds like you said contradictory. It sounds like it's a whole paradigm shift in our psyche of human beings and their minds of, well, no, I can't show weakness. If I'm doing this 100% and I'm going to be the best because we want to win, right? We're competitive. Nobody's, you know, we're, we're not saying that's bad. But if to be competitive, like I can't lose. Well, that's, you know, that's a lie. We're from the pit of hell, if you ask me, because fa failure feeds, man, that fire that kind of gets us to that next level for growth. And if we're all just talking about growth, which is really the end goal, like I don't even know that I'm as much into the results as I am the process and the journey right now being older. Uh, but, you know, talk about that. What do you, as far as a competitor goes, which you are, um, and having to be really great at everything you do, what do you tell your kids when it comes to failure? Uh, one, I, I, I can't stand when they say the word can't. Yeah. They'll say, oh, I can't do that. I'm like, whoa, 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 stop. We don't say that. Yeah. We don't say can't. We don't say can't. We don't say can't. It, it was so much where I got stickers made that say can't for unafraid. Okay. The word can't. Yeah. And there's an X through oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. And, and then with our logo in the behind. I, I, am, I am not a fan of the word can't because I, I would like my, my kids, I'll prove it all the time. Like, I can't do that. I'll be like, all right, try it. All right, try it. it. Here's a perfect example. I was picking my son up from the airport probably two summers ago when they were coming back from their mother's. And he had one of those duffel bags, like the one that cross strapped, kind of like an athletic bag. And I put the bed of the truck down and he kind of dropped it for me to put it up. And I was like, hey, but put it up there. He's like, I, I, he's like, I can't do it. I go, what'd you say? And he goes, it's real heavy, dad. I was like, well, let, let's try. Let's, let's try. So he tried it once, no go. I was like, it's okay. I was like, put, use your, you know, use your legs, kind of, you know, yeah. use some power. He did it again, didn't work. And he started getting a little frustrated. I'm like, bro, it's okay. I know you can do this. And then on the third try, he put it up there. And I was like, this is why we don't say can't. Let this be this right here called over his sister. I was like, all right, here's what just happened. Yeah. I, <laughs> and, mean, and I might be going overboard, but dude, I'm like, man, we limit don't yourself. say can't. Absolutely. Don't I mean, it, it's it. all about it's all about our expectations and limiting ourselves because we or ultimately we can do more than we think we can do. And 100%. So that's crazy. Dude, man. we are phenomenal. We are ph <laughs> there is a uh, I wish I had it. Let me, I got to pull this up for you real quick. Yeah, yeah. Men go abroad to wonder at the heights of the mountains, at the waves of the sea, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean, at the circular motions of the stars, and they pass by themselves without ever wondering. And, and, and I read that and, it, and it's like, dude, we are so freaking awesome as humans, yeah. Like it's so true. Like just think about the beauty of the mountains, um, the, these huge waves crashing down, these yeah. crazy deltas that the, the rivers form and, and or just any na nature thing, these huge yeah. redwood trees, whatever it may be. And we, and we, we pass by about, about ourselves like, dude, you are created amazingly. It could do some amazing things. God doesn't mess up. And yeah. then they go, Eddie, well, what about this? And what about this? Like, Hey man, I would, I would have to leave it at, do not trust your own understanding. Like right. it's not, it's not, it's That's bigger right. than this. It's bigger than this. Uh, things that we can't comprehend. Um, but it's like, we, we are, we are powerful. We are awesome. Like we are so freaking cool. It's and ridiculous. Oh by, what we and do. oh, by the way, the same God that created all that stuff you just mentioned, as far as the amazing nature and creation, he created us too. So the same 100%, guy, right? it's the same thing. We weren't just a one A. It wasn't a and one. And he wants a, a relationship a. with us. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what's cool. You want you want to talk to me, lonely me yeah. over there here. Yeah, that's lonely, the no, that's no, no, the no. end game. Is how how close can we get to him? Exactly. And then all this other stuff. We'll be the biggest, baddest, whatever we want to be. We'll stand at the top of the mountain someday. But yeah, that's where it's got to be first. Is to get back to the main thing. But all right, man. I know I got to be respectful of your time. I mean, I could go off crazy here. Uh, but you no, go for hours on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> all right. I got a couple more for you, man. Um, Go for it. Tell me what you think us civilians, what's our misconception about military service members and their duty and their service? Like, what do we, if we can keep peek behind the curtain, what's a misconception that the, the civilian world has about the military, would you say? I think... I think that's a tough question. I think there's two sides to the military. 
and 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 I hate saying this, but to be to be 100% transparent, there's a side that people that go into the military and they want free education, which understandably, but they're still serving and their heart's really not into it. They, they look at it as it's a job. I get a pay, paycheck. I get some, my medical taken care of. And I hate saying this, but this is the true. And the reason why I can yeah. say this is being 20 years in. Yeah. Um, and, and they're not, they don't, they're not fully grasping while they're, what they're there for. And, yeah. and I was in this category, my first four years in the Marines, hundred mm. percent, no question about it. That was me. Uh, not so much the, the, um, college thing just yeah just wanted a job, job and wanted yeah. to, i thought the military sounded cool didn't really get what the big picture what you were doing mm -hmm. then there's another side there's another side that's like all right i'm doing this for my my country and for my neighbor you know for my mom for my dad my brothers and sisters my all my friends and my fellow americans it's about uh -huh. it's about them and they're like okay whatever and it doesn't matter what the job is i, I firmly believe this it, it takes a lot of jobs to to make the machine work if you look at the intricate yeah. workings of a, of a watch you need all the little gears and springs mm -hmm. and all the little things to make to make it go to make it work yeah. the military is no different in my mind now there are certain positions in the military that are more glorified and people put their line their lives on the line a little bit more uh absolutely but you know i you, the guys that are doing that they need this intelligence they need that drone up in the air working capturing mm -hmm. this footage they need yeah. to capture this conversation or whatever it may be they need that food when they come home they need this building to yeah. sleep in they need you, you can get where it's going they need those dogs yeah yeah um so there i think there's two sides of that but i, I but i think I, I guess the misconception is, is is probably the biggest that i've seen is a lot of us on the other side of it, I'm saying we do it for the country is we really, it's an honor to serve. Like it really is an honor. Wow. And I think a lot of times people like, Oh, they, I've heard like, Oh, you know, we should thank them. We, we you know, we want to thank them, thank them, which I, which we appreciate, but we really yeah. just don't, we don't, I wouldn't say we don't need it or we don't, ex, we don't yeah. expect it. It's not, that's not what it's about. It's not the, Hey, look at me. It's really about, it's about you. Yeah. I'm doing this for, I mean, really, if it comes down to, I'm doing yeah. this for you because I don't want this crap to come over here. And yeah. if we don't do deterrence, depending on your views of combat and sure. all that stuff, yeah. it's going to be in our backyard. hundred percent. I love that answer. I mean, I love how I mean, you, that's just the way it is. I love how you kind of divided to uh, the two sides. Cause that was a great way to put context around that answer. Uh, but no, I, I, I I can see that that's a hundred percent authentic the way that you were. And, and, and I love that you said that you had to transition that mindset from the first four years, you were just kind of head down I, I getting did. a paycheck. Right. And then, and then you maturity. realize a lot of that's maturity. Oh, it's not, it's not, it's really not a lot of their fault. They're just, they're very young 100%. out of high school. It's a, it's a I mean, you, dude, you can, they'll, they'll times. tell you that I'm sure if, yeah. uh, you know, we talk to them, they're going to say, yep, that's me. And, and so I, I love that. And, and we need more people in the world that adopted the mindset of even though I'm not out defending our country right now, because, you know, because somebody's at home so it can be safe, but I think we need to adopt that here in, in, you know, on, in home at home base here, just as people serving each other. Like if we exactly. can serve each other, I may not protect you from your enemy, but I mean, I can certainly, but I'm going to be a good solidify. citizen and a good freaking neighbor that you want to, you want to like help everyone. Like you're like, Oh, they're out there doing this. They're, they're, you can be right. back here freaking take care of your house yeah. and the, your neighborhood. It's just going to yeah. spread like wildfire. That's make like them proud. I mean, that's the way I look at it. My dad served in Vietnam. He was a captain, but make the people proud who are over there doing it because they're doing it for us not to fight each other. That's mm -hmm. not why they're going to put their life on the line today. So right. that they can get pissed off at the grocery store because somebody took my buggy. I mean, come on. So uh, no, I want us to, I want us to get to a point where we, we honor each other. And, and I know that sounds kind of, I don't know, Pollyanna or pie in the sky dreaming, but I think we can get there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. One more question for you, man. I appreciate this has you're been good, awesome. Buddy. You're good. I can you're keep, good. I can you're keep good. going, but you're good. I'm going to, I'm going to throw this one. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you played baseball. It sounded like you might have, but I, I don't know how good at hitting the curveball you were, but we're going to find out. This is a, this oh, is boy. a curveball for you, man. Um, you're president for a day. What's the first thing you do? Eddie Penny gets a call on the bat phone, get to Washington. We got a job for you and you're president. 
Congrats. Oh, that is a, wow. Congrats. You probably hang up the phone and go, never mind. I don't want that job. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, that is so, that is a, that's, that, that's a curve bar with a slider on a fastball right there. I don't even yeah, know. And, and you know, and I would say, cause there's way more than one thing, but just give us a theme about where you might deploy your resources. If you're I I'd say I would probably obviously need a lot of information. I would want to yeah. see we're all funding that is going out of the United States of America. And I would probably cut off a lot of things and put it towards infrastructure, roads, schools, 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 right. Hospitals. That would probably be what I would wow. be doing. That would probably That's be my awesome. biggest one. Schools. I would start with probably I would schools and I would freaking. um, as Trump, I believe, was going to do his second one, or he started to do, was like pro-American uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Right. Like I would bring in, in patriotism hardcore into those freaking schools. And I would want the schools beefed up. I'd want there to be enough teachers for their students. I'd want their students to be, I mean, and I'd want like, one, one thing I've realized is I, I have a lot of kids. We have like four in our house right now. We have five total. Yeah. But each kid learns a different way. One can, you can sit there and talk to them. They'll sit down. They'll be still right. as heck and they'll retain everything. You do it to another one. They're off in like four seconds. They need to see things. They need you to draw something. They need you to show them. Yeah. I would want those, those classrooms to be available for pretty much every school for all our kids to be taught the right way. And not just like you go sit your little butt down and and pay attention because that and we'll, medic we'll medicate you right it will medicate yeah, you yeah. if you don't sit yeah still. and that would be the next thing and and i would make uh counseling services covered by insurance that's that's another thing some For people sure. just need to be talked to dude that's mind-boggling that it's not yeah. already covered but no it, i'm with you I'm with you. That's a great plan. It's a long day so, for me. <laughs> hey, hey. So maybe you got to get an extension on that contract. Say, hey, I got more to do. I, I can't do it in one day. But right, let me yeah. ask you this. Now that we're talking about it, you kind of led me down this road. But I see a lot of former, not only SEALs, but just military getting on the ballot throughout the country. And I know, you know, we got to step into these situations, whether it's yes. school board, Congress, whatever. But is that on your horizon ever just even on a small scale of a school board or any, any sort of elected position on your horizon? I, I'm, I'm definitely not going to say never. Cause that's just a, not a good word to say sure. that and always, as we know, that's right up there with can't. Yeah, it, it is right up there. Um, no, have I thought about it? Yes. And the reason why I thought about it is the cor the corruption is so bad. It is so bad. And, and people don't realize how bad I don't realize how bad, it is. And I really think it's bad. Um, but yeah, it's good to get people in there and we need to get more good people with solid foundations and good heart and mind in those positions that their focus isn't about the dollar bill. I mean, it's got to be about the American people. And unfortunately, I think about 80% of them in those positions, it's not in the right spot. And that's just my opinion, but uh, I, I have thought about it. I've actually discussed with my wife, um, does that mean I'm looking to do that? No, it does not mean that I'm looking to do that, but I would never, I would never say never. <laughs> Let's yeah. leave it with that. I like it. Yeah. The more, I mean, we've got some folks probably in Washington that say they're Christians, but we got a lot that are struggling with what that looks like and how we that have act, a so-called that... administration that says they're Catholic. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 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 We, so we I think we need that. more, we need more, you know, biblical Christians who, you know, have that heart, condition right if you ever listen to chad Wright from 37 project he's like dude it's all about the heart issue man we got to just change the heart and i agree 100 percent. so we can get more guys like you man tell me where to tell me where to sign up if you need a campaign manager uh there we no, go so but i you know i anything you feel like you want to get off your chest for uh for the for the audience because this has been amazing and and it's, um, i could do it again but you kind of just like made me think of something else like I, and i wish i had two days as president I think one of the, I, I think, and this is, this is nothing new. I think a big, big problem, what we're, we're kind of seeing is just like the lack of fatherhood. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, if you look at um, inner city kids um, and I have a really good friend that, uh, that has an organization up in Baltimore dealing with inner city kids, get them out of gangs into sports, yeah. getting, you know, getting jobs, all that stuff. Uh, it, I think it's like 70, 80% is out of wedlock. Like they don't have, the there's no dad. Yeah. And, and, and it, they, these kids wow. are looking for fathers mm -hmm. and they're finding it in gangs and violence and doing not so great things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess I would, wow. I would just like, we need to, 
I always, I, I've learned is like, you got to take care of your house first, get your house and then start working on other little pieces. And before you know, you, you know, you're, you're covering a lot of stuff, but yeah, I, I would challenge dude, every dad father out there to be a father and a father. And, and this is going to nail some people in the audience. And I, again, I yeah. wouldn't be saying this if I wasn't guilty. And, and I, and I feel this way because I was that and I pulled myself out of it. A father is not a father that doesn't really hang out with the children, goes to work, comes back and then goes, does his own thing. That's not being a father. Yeah, That's putting disengaged. all the stuff or, and, and this is for mothers too. You got to be engaged in those freaking, it's hard, man. It's not easy. Even if it's for like 20 minutes yeah. engaging. How was your day? What's going on and finding out what's in their lives? Because I mean, we don't know. I know. If I go a couple of days without talking to my kids, I'm like, okay, what's going on? What, what happened? What, what's what right. are you doing? You know what I mean? So it's just yep. like, we're not engaging. We're, we're, we're going through the motions. You're we right. are go- I, guilty. We, we are going through the motions and we've got to be a father, just like our father fathers us. We need to be fathering yeah. firm and fair, man, You're firm right. and fair. You're uh, right. That, that You're right. right there. Man, I tell you what, it's been, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor, man. Humbly. I, I thank you for coming on. I, this I has appreciate been you having me on here. Really crazy. It's a great conversation, man. I really yeah, I, it. I got, I got to know you a little more and now I can actually say, I think I feel like I might know you some. There you uh, go. Hey. And, and, hey, we did something today. No, yeah, we hey, did audience. totally different on podcasts too. We hit some new subjects here, which is great. Yes. Yeah, so, Hey, I, I say audience, it goes without saying, how much gold this was so i hope your notepad's full i hope you listen to it back again because i'm going to listen to it multiple times uh and I, I hope you look uh follow eddie up eddie tell us where to find you tell us about your website uh your uh the company as well and how to how to track you down maybe okay so we got the company's contingent group that's where we do risk mitigation services the unafraid stuff is on eddiepenny.com and then I, I blast all my ideas and perspective on certain things uh, at eddie.penny on Instagram. Uh, so that's where you can find me. But Eddie, Eddie Penny on there started the den. It's kind of a little media, but it's more built for like um, inspiring motivation, workouts, diets, fighting stuff, um, yeah. parent, parenting stuff. Oh, nice. For, for all of us, we can, everyone can put in their information and be like, hey, this really helped me. Uh, and just feed each other and feed each other. And because we need a community and it gets rid of all the rubbish, I guess you could say of like your, yeah. your mainstream media that's censoring a lot of certain things and not letting yeah. you put up the truth. So that's, yeah. that's available. That's on eddiepenny.com, the den, uh, but that's, that's the best place to find me. Yeah. So give us kind of a, maybe a time frame on the release. Can you give us an idea? Maybe? Uh, well, the book is been at DOD to get approval for about six months. Um, I was talking to Eddie Gallagher. He just had his yeah. book come out. It took about eight months. So okay. it should be coming soon. Then it'll go off to publishing. So okay. and, and provided we don't have to change anything or like that, but hopefully soon, man, hopefully by the beginning of next year, we got it. We got a book. And then I don't, we already uh, started working on number two, which is the uh, pretty much wow. the pillars of life, which is an unafraid mindset book. Wow. So that's, that's uh, we're already started working on that for been on that for about a month or two now. That's so. awesome. That's awesome, man. Uh, audience. Hey, tell your wives that'd be a great Valentine's day present. Eddie Penny's book for February. Let's just predict that it'll be out by then. So we go. anyway, man, Eddie, thank you audience. I hope you enjoyed it till next time. He's been Eddie Penny. We've been last in line. Be blessed.